And so the, the question that was uh, kind of asked earlier is, so why does algorithmic bias matter? Like I have just shown you that humans are really biased too. So why are, uh, why are we talking about algorithmic bias? And people have brought this up kind of like, what's, what's the fuss about it? Um, and there, I, I think algorithmic bias is uh, very significant and worth talking about. And I'm gonna share uh, four reasons uh, for that. Um, one is that machine learning can amplify bias. Um, so it's not just encoding existing biases, but in some cases it's making them worse. Um, there have been a few studies on this. Uh, one I like is um, from Maria de Artiga of uh, CMU. And here they were, uh, they took uh, people's, I think, uh, job descriptions from LinkedIn. And what they found is that imbalances ended up being compounded. And so in the group of surgeons, um, only 14% were women. However, in the true positives, so they were trying to predict the, the job title from the, the summary, uh, women were only 11% in the true positives. Um, so this kind of imbalance has gotten worse. And basically there was kind of this asymmetry where the, uh, you know, the algorithm has learned it's safer for, uh, for for women to kind of not, not guess surgeon. Another, so this is uh, one reason, uh, another reason that uh, algorithmic bias is a concern is that algorithms are used very differently than human decision makers in practice. And so people sometimes talk about them as though they are plug and play interchangeable of, you know, if a human's this bias and the algorithm is, you know, this bias, why don't we just substitute it in? Um, however, the, the whole system around it ends up kind of being different in, in practice. Uh, one, one kind of aspect of this is people are more likely to assume algorithms are objective or error free, even if they're given the option of a human override. And so if you give a person, you know, even if you just say, hey, I'm just giving the judge this recommendation, they don't have to follow it. If it's coming from a computer, many people are going to take that as objective. In some cases, also, there may be, you know, pressure from their boss to, you know, not disagree with the computer more times, you know, nobody's going to get fired by going with the computer recommendation. Algorithms are more likely to be implemented with no appeals process in place. And so we saw that earlier when we were talking about recourse. Algorithms are often used at scale. They can be replicating an identical bias at scale. And algorithmic systems are cheap. And all of these, I think, are interconnected. Um, so in many cases, um, I think that algorithmic systems are being implemented not because they produce better outcomes for everyone, but because um, they're kind of a cheaper way to do things at scale. You know, offering a recourse process is more expensive. Being on the lookout for errors is more expensive. So this is kind of um, cost-cutting measures. And Kathy O'Neill talks about many of these themes in her book, Weapons of Math Destruction, um, kind of under the idea that the, the privileged are processed by people, the poor are processed by algorithms. There's a question. Two questions. Mm -hmm. This seems like an intensely deep topic, needing specialized expertise to avoid getting it wrong. If you were building an ML product, would you approach an academic institution for consultation on this? Do you see a data product development triad becoming maybe a quartet involving an ethics or data privacy expert? Um. So I think interdisciplinary work is very important. Um, I would. I would definitely uh, focus on trying to find kind of domain experts on whatever your particular domain is who understand the intricacies of that domain um, is important. Um, and I think with the, kind of with the academic, it depends. You do want to make sure you get someone who's kind of applied enough to uh, kind of understand how, um, how things are happening in, in industry. But yeah, I think involving more people and people from more fields is a, is a, good, a good approach on the whole. Someone invents and publishes a better ML technique, like attention or transformers, and then next a graduate student demonstrates using it to improve facial recognition by 5%, and then a small startup publishes an app that does better facial recognition, and then a government uses the app to study downtown walking patterns and endangered species, and after these successes for court-ordered monitoring, and then a repressive government then takes that method to identify ethnicities, and then you get a genocide. No one's made a huge ethical error at any incremental step, yet the result is horrific. I have no doubt that Amazon will soon serve up a personally customized price for each item that maximizes their profits. How can such ethical creep be addressed where the effect is remote from many small causes? 
Um, so, we'll, yeah, so that that's a, a kind of a great summary of how, yeah, these things can happen somewhat incrementally. Um, I'll talk about some tools to implement um, it, kind of uh, towards the end of this lesson that hopefully can help us. Um, so some of it is I think we do need to get better at kind of trying to think a few more steps ahead than we have been. Um, you know, in particular, we've seen examples of people, um, you know, there was the study of how to identify protesters in a crowd, even when they had scarves or sunglasses or hats on, you know, and when the, the researchers on that were questioned, it, they were like, oh, it never even occurred to us that bad guys would use this. You know, we just thought it would be uh, for finding bad people. Um, and so I do think uh, kind of everyone should be uh, building their uh ability to, to think a few more steps ahead. And, and part of this is like, it's great to do this in teams, preferably in diverse teams, um, can help with that that process. Um, I mean, on this question of computer vision, there has been, you know, just in the last few months, um, uh, is it Joe Redman, uh, creator of YOLO, who has said that he's no longer working on computer vision just because he thinks the the um, misuses so far um, outweigh the, the positives. Um, and Timnit Gebru said she's she's considering that as well. Um, so I think there are there are times where you ha you have to consider. Um, and then I think also really actively thinking about how to what safeguards do we need to put in place to kind of address the the misuses that are happening. Yes. I just wanted to say somebody really liked the Kathy O'Neill quote: "Privileged are processed by people; the poor are processed by algorithms." And they're looking forward to learning more, reading more from Kathy O'Neill. Is that a book that you recommend? Yes, yeah. And and, and Kathy O'Neill also uh, writes, uh, and, and Kathy O'Neill is a fe fellow uh, fellow math PhD, um, uh, but she also has yeah written a number of good articles. Um, and it, it, the the book kind of goes through a number of, uh, of case studies of how algorithms are being used in in different places. Um, so kind of um, in in summary of humans are biased, why do why are we making a fuss about algorithmic bias? Um, so one, as we saw earlier, machine learning can create feedback loops. So it's, you know, it's not just um, kind of observing what's happening in the world, but it's also determining outcomes and it's kind of determining what future data is. Machine learning can amplify bias. Algorithms and humans are used very differently in practice. And then I'll also say technology is power. Um, and with that comes responsibility. And I think for, for all of us to, to have access to deep learning, we are still in a kind of very uh, fortunate and small percentage of the world that uh, is, is able to use this technology right now. And I hope, um, I hope we will all use it responsibly and really take our, our, our power seriously. Um, and I just, uh, I just noticed the time, and I think we're about to start um, a next section on, on analyzing or um, kind of steps, uh, steps we can take. So this would be a good, a good place to take a break. So uh, let's meet back in I guess, seven minutes at uh, 7.45. All right, let's start back up. And actually, I was at a slightly different place than I thought. Um, 